Hello YouTube. I hope everyone is well and uh, stays well and uh, today I want to talk about some very interesting observations uh, that uh, are taking place uh, in our solar system and events that, take our, that are taking place in our universe and how they relate to what's happening on Earth or maybe how they do not relate. I have to tell you that uh, the subjects are very interesting to me, but not only me, but somebody whom I respect very much and have been in touch with ever since late 1980s. I would uh, say 1989, probably 1990, and that's the... Today he's a chief science editor of a major Russian newspaper, Vladimir Lagovsky. We uh, met each other, so to say, um, via uh, writing and exchange of information uh, when the Soviet Union was falling apart and the UFO information that was kept secret by the state for many years came up. And um, Lagovsky was one of the first ones. I still have uh, his um, published reports about previously secret military Soviet UFO information and uh, I believe the date was 1990 when some of the publications came out and he has uh, been very knowledgeable about this field and many others and he is also interested in what's happening around around our universe so to say and now uh, he is no lo longer with Rabochia Tribuna newspaper now he is with a major Russian newspaper and um, I think that he is interested in the same developments as I am, and I'm sure more. It, it's very interesting. Anyway, and he, he is a person to keep an eye on and to see where the interests lie. So first I want to talk about the Atlas Comet. It was discovered on December 28, 2019. Uh, through an automated asteroid warning system, uh, the Terrestrial Asteroid Impact Last Alert System, ATLAS, after which the Celestial Wanderer was named. The comet is from among the so-called long period comets. The rotation around the Sun uh, takes, uh, takes it 2767.68 uh, years. The last time it visited this solar system was in 747 BC and the next visit will be in the 47th century. This year Atlas will be at a minimum distance from the Sun and it will be on May 31, uh, 31st. It is visible, uh, it's, it's a ghostly gre green spot in the evening hours low above the horizon in the Camilla Pardalis constellation and Perseus. The color of the coma, which is the gas cloud surrounding the comet's nucleus, is consisting of, it's, it's because of the gases, cyanide and diatomic carbon. So, this comet Atlas, which was away for 2767 years, has returned to our solar system. And it's happening now, the green spot which appeared in the sky last December is rapidly flaring up, growing much faster than expected. Until recently it was barely noticeable. And now it's a thousand times bigger and brighter. Is this a sign? Well, there are conspiracy theories that have no doubts about it. Seeming they see an obvious analogy with the epidemic of the new coronavirus in the sense of appearance and development. But, you know, far from mysticism, uh, astronomers explain these coincidences are random. As for the green spot, it is the comet Atlas, also known as C2019Y4. It gets closer to the Sun and it heats up emitting gases. Now, the Comet crossed the orbit of Mars and was visible in the telescopes. At the beginning of April, it became well visible to the naked eye. On April 6, 2020, astronomers reported in the Astronomer's Telegram 
the possible disintegration of this comet Atlas. Uh, they claim that this comet has frag fragmented into several pieces. The fragmentation may be the result of the outgassing, causing the increase in centrifugal force of the comet. Well, I am not sure now that it actually fragmented, and we will know in the near future. Now, during January to March 2020, the comet was located in the constellation of Ursa Major. Throughout the month of April, the comet was to be in the constellation of Camilla Pardalis. On May 12, it would move into Perseus. It will be at its closest point to Earth on May 23, during a new moon, when the comet will be 17 degrees from the Sun. And on May 31st, it will be in the Taurus constellation 12 degrees from the Sun. By the end of May, Atlas probably will be inside Mercury's orbit and will become even brighter and is projected to look four times larger than the visible diameter of the full moon. The spectacle is expected to be impressive unless, of course, the comet falls apart, flying next to our luminary. Now, there are conspiracy theories about the comet and the pandemic on our planet. Now, if mystically minded people are at least right, the peak of the pandemic COVID-19 will come at the end of May, and then it will decline globally. And if the comet does collapse, the relief in the epidemiological sense will come even earlier. So now I want to look at a, we can call it strange explosion, but it may be strange to us, but not to other forces in the universe. There was a powerful explosion in the universe, not, I don't know, how should I time it, should I say not that long ago, but anyway, it was not as powerful as Big Bang, but significant enough. And this gigantic cataclysm was visible from Earth. Almost half of the universe has illuminated the gamma ray burst GRB of this record power. In a matter of seconds, it released as much energy as the Sun produces in an eternity, in 10 billion years. Only the Big Bang was more powerful, the very one that resulted in the whole world around us. There is such belief. Astronomers assigned the GRB 190114C to the source of the burst or explosion, it was located in a distant galaxy, 4 billion light years from Earth. The radiation generated by some enormous cataclysm that blazed, that was, that was directed at our planet, and it reached our planet on January 14, 2019. It didn't do any harm. This so-called ray gun was too far away. Gamma bursts are not a rare phenomenon. They happen here and there in the universe almost every day. Orbital telescopes react to them, and radiation does not reach the surface of the Earth. It absorbs, this, it absorbs the atmosphere. However, the GRB 190114C explosion was so powerful that its radiation penetrated the Earth's atmosphere, from which the so-called splash itself was first detected by ground-based telescopes. More than 300 scientists around the world joined the observation, and their report was uh, introduced uh, by Nature magazine. Anal analysis of data from gamma telescopes showed that the energy of the curved rays was a trillion times higher than the energy of visible light. One of the report's authors, um, Alisa Bernardini, uh, she said that recorded photons are the highest energy photons ever detected in gamma ray bursts. The nature of gamma ray bursts is mysterious, although there are assumptions. According to one hypothesis, the explosion and the subsequent flash generates an emerging black hole 
which is formed as a result of the collapse of a massive star. According to another hypothesis, the sources of GRB are colliding neutron stars. In the first case, the radiance that illuminates the universe lasts longer. It is not known what exactly exploded to the extent that the scientists compared the power of the, clat of the cataclysm with the Big Bang itself. But there is hope to understand it someday. Scientists rely on data collected during observations of this previously unseen event. It's very interesting. <clears throat> now I want to talk again <clears throat> but about something else. About an astrobiologist um, who believes that coronavirus <clears throat> came to Earth from space. According to the scientists, the infection was carried by a meteorite that exploded over China in October of 2019. This theory was published by the astronomer in the scientific journal The Lancet. Dr. Chandra Wikrama Singh <clears throat> detailed how hundreds of trillions of infections, infectious viral particles could have entered the air of the ch air of Chinese regions along with small-scale carbon-containing dust from a collapsing celestial body. Vikrama Singh at the same time is not some newcomer but a well-known in the United Kingdom astronomer, mathematician and astrobiologist. And he is also a staunch adherent of the idea of panspermia, the theory that life on planet Earth was brought from space and asteroids and meteorites. After the initial deposition of infectious particles uh, in a small localized area, for example over Wuhan, Hubei province, particles began to gradually fall from the, uh, <clears throat> to the ground in a disorderly manner. And this process can actually take up to one or two years uh, before the whole infectious agent falls, according to the scientists. This theory also fits well with the emergence of new strains of, of influenza viruses, including those that have emerged in recent years, according to Vikram Singh. It is possible that this scientist sim simply sums up the topic of coronavirus under his favorite theory of panspermia, but in the history of mankind, in many countries, there was a belief that if the sky, if, the, if, if, if you know, if, if something flies through the sky, then wait for a big epidemic soon. Based on these beliefs, many researchers seriously believe that viruses and other dangerous microorganisms can be transported on meteorites or asteroids from planet to planet. As proved, proof of this version, it is sometimes presented that viruses in general are very mysterious objects as if they are in fact something alien and not created on Earth. By the way, in 1981 there was a book published titled Diseases from Space by Fred Hoyle and Vikram Masinga. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by space dust meteoroids, asteroids, comets, planetoids, and also by spacecraft carrying unintended contamination by microorganisms. Now, distribution may have occurred just spanning galaxies and so may not be restricted to the limited scale of solar systems. That's what they believe in. By the way, the panspermia theory which suggests that life on Earth did not originate in our planet, but was transported here from somewhere else in the universe, even for staunch scientists, some evidence ex suggests that extraterrestrial origin of life <clears throat> may not be such a far out idea. One argument that supports the panspermia theory is the emergence of life soon after the heavy bombardment period of Earth between 4 and 3.8 billion years ago. Now, during this period, researchers believe the Earth endured an extended and very powerful series of meteor showers. 
Well, however, the earliest evidence for life on Earth suggests it was present some 3.83 billion years ago, overlapping with this bombardment phase. These observations suggest that living things during this period would have had faced extinction, contrib contributing to the idea that life did not originate on Earth, but was brought here. However, in order for life to originate somewhere else in the universe, there would have to be an environment on another planet capable of supporting it. I urge you to look at my video about Ivan Yefremov. I put it up a few years ago. Uh, this was a very mysterious person and a powerful scientist in the Soviet Union. Anyway, let's look at what took place over China in October of 2019. What appeared to be a dazzling meteor lit up the sky over northeast China on Friday, October 11, appearing as a brilliant fireball in the available surveillance videos of the event. The meteor occurred at about 12.16 a.m. Beijing time, turning night into day and casting dark shadows as it streaked through the sky, according to the Chinese state-run CCTV. Uh, videos of the fireball were captured by surveillance cameras in the city of Songyuan, in the province of Jilin, as well as by many residents across northeast China, according to CCTV. Scientists with the Purple Mountain Observatory, part of the Chinese Academy of Scientists, were reviewing videos to study this fireball, but apparently there have not been any re uh, reports of meteorites found on the ground from this fireball, but that's according to the Chinese state television. Now, as for the observatory, please look at my videos about Chinese UFO research and history. It's a very, very interesting place. And uh, once Ivan Ivremov visited this place also. It's, it's fascinating and I, I urge you to look more about Russia and China in my research <clears throat> and do your own. Now I want to talk about a very interesting star. It's not an easy name to pronounce, but uh, I'll do my best. Betelgeuse weirdness. Betelgeuse is called also Alpha Orionis second brightest star in the constellation Orion, marking the eastern shoulder of the hunter, so to say. Its name is derived from the Arabic word Yad al-Jawza, which means hand of the central one. The pronunciation was screwed up by Westerners and anyway, we won't go into history, but Betelgeuse is one of the most luminous stars in the night sky. Ongoing observations of Betelgeuse reveals that we still have much to learn about its structure. It's a mysterious star. Observations of the red giant reveal that gas that is leaving the star is colder than astronomers thought it would be. Scientists aren't sure how so much mass left the star while not generating a lot of heat. This is what they said in a study that was published in 2016. Possible explanations inc include magnetic fields or shock waves, but more work, more work will need it to be done to confirm the models. Astronomers are also doing comparison studies with another red supergiant star, Antares, to better understand the situation. Meanwhile, scientists remain puzzled by Betelgeuse ultra-fast rotation, which is about 150 times faster than expected. This may have happened if the star swallowed a sun mass star about 100,000 years ago, according to this study. Given the Betelgeuse huge size, it's about 1,000 times wider than our sun, or 860 million miles, 1.4 billion kilometers, across, it should be spinning much more slowly, suggest astronomers. 
Now, American astronomers from Villanova University and their colleagues from Texas University informed the astronomical community that the star Betelgeuse ceased to dim and gained the former brightness in the visible range. It stopped dimming and it became bright again. A couple of days later, a similar resurrection was also observed in the infrared spectrum. To remind my audience, Betelgeuse amazed observers in early 2020, making unprecedented changes in its behavior. The star became twice as dim as before, which foreshadowed its imminent transformation into a supernova. That is, it foreshadowed the explosion which would follow a further decline in brilliance. But Betelgeuse suddenly became brighter. It happened quickly, within a month. Now astronomers are scratching their heads, trying to figure out what's going on with it. Whether the star dims due to its lifestyle <clears throat> in the process of, being, of which it pulsates, periodically inflates and shrinks, and at the same time gains and reduces luminosity. Whether the star was obscured, perhaps even a cloud of dust that it produced, or the strengthening of light indicates that the cataclysm has become closer, maybe began to rapidly develop in the core of the star, some astronomers claim they have detected gravitational waves from the star Betelgeuse that may be linked to its future explosion. At the same time, there is a possibility that the signal detection is the result of an error. <clears throat> Recorded gravitational waves are the type of explosive waves that a supernova could produce. However, Betelgeuse did not become a supernova and will not explode, according to scientists, in the next 100,000 years. There is a possibility that the gravitational waves coming from the star's side are not really connected to it, but to another object that is much further away. In addition, the signal may be false. Well, a scientist at the Las Cumbres Observatory, Andy Howell, reported that gravitational waves do not refer to the Betelgeuse explosion because the star it's, is outside the localization region and has not recorded neutrinos that indicate, that indicate huge energy emissions. <clears throat> the star of Betelgeuse is a red supergiant. It is visible in the sky just above to the left of the curved line of the three stars, the so-called Orion Belt. I believe it's 495 to 650 light years away from the Sun. Betelgeuse is 14,000, uh, 1,400 times bigger than our luminary, than our Sun, and 20 times heavier. If you put it in the center of the solar system, the edge of the star will absorb Jupiter. A Betelgeuse explosion would have lit up almost half of the galaxy. The substance and radiation ejected by Betelgeuse can destroy life on planets near stars located a few dozen light years away. If, of course, there is life there. You know what? We'll speak more about this star in the future and nearby stars and possible presence of life there. Just keep your eyes to the sky, to this star as well. Now let's find out if there is someone next to our universe. Well, is our universe just one of many universes? It's a real possibility according to some scientists. The idea that we live in a multiverse arises from a theory called eternal inflation, which posits that shortly after the Big Bang, um, that formed the universe, space-times expanded at different rates in different places, giving rise to bubble universes that may function with their own, se with their own separate laws of physics. The theory that our universe is contained inside a bubble 
and that multiple alternative universes exists inside their own bubbles, making up the multiverse. Multiverse is for the first time actually it was being tested by by physicists like um, Stephen Finney from University College of London. The scientist believes that that they arose from the uh, contact of our universe with neighboring ones and if so there may well be other worlds at least four according to such scientists universes arise and disappear like vapor bubbles in boiling liquids <clears throat> arise and collide and bounce off each other leaving traces is it possible to get from our universe to some other universe? Or are they neighbors separated by some insurmountable obstacle? The obstacle can be removed, according to Professor Thibault Damour of the French Institute of Advanced Scientific Research, and his colleague Dr. Sergei Saladukhin of the Russian Institute of Physics and Mathematics, uh, from the Lebedev Physical Institute in Moscow, who now works at the German International University of Bremen. According to scientists, there are passageways leading to other worlds from the outside. They, these passageways, look exactly like black holes, but really they are not black holes. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> Tunnels that connect remote parts of our universe, some astrophysicists call them wormholes, others mole burrows. The bottom line is that having dived into such a hole, you can almost instantly come out somewhere in another galaxy, remote by millions, even billions of light years. At least theoretically, such a journey is possible within our universe. And you, if you believe Thibault and Sar Saladukhin, you can come out even further in a different universe, and the way back is not closed. Scientists, through calculations, have imagined what the mall burrows leading to the universe, neighboring universes should look like, and it turned out that such objects are no different from the already known black holes and they behave in the same way, absorb, absorb matter and deform the fabric of space-time. The only significant difference is that you can get to the burrow and stay whole or in one piece. A black hole will tear the approaching ship into atoms with its monstrous <coughs> gravitational field. Unfortunately, uh, Thibault and Saladukhin do not know how to distinguish the black hole from the mall hole or burrow from a long distance. Well, this will be revealed only in the process of, emergent, um, of immersion into the object. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about some very interesting discoveries in the center of our universe. Uh, so-called uh, six flying ghosts, G objects. This name, this is what was assigned to the mysterious celestial bodies orbiting a black hole. G objects look like gas, but they act like stars. According to the director of the University of California, Los Angeles, Andrea Gass, um, the objects we saw in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, belong to a new uh, class, according to her colleague um, Anna Cusillo. They are very compact but change shape, moving in orbit around a black hole. Stretch, getting closer. <clears throat> the words of um, uh, female astronomers are quoted by the Keck Observatory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii, located in the islands of Hawaii. The data collected here for <clears throat> over 13 years and allowed to make, you know, this, this allowed to make the discovery to detect the same G objects to determine their orbits. The first object, named G1, 
according to uh, uh, Miss Andrea uh, Giaz, notice was noticed back in 2005. The second G2 was discovered by German scientists in 2012, but neither um, Americans or the Germans understood what the finding, what were, the, were those findings, which looked so ghostly. What was most embarrassing was the day these ghostly substances were moving, which, to put it mildly, is not typical for gas clouds. Now astronomers have seen four more celestial bodies, G3, G4, and G5, and G6, similar to the previous and just as strange. Everything like the planets of the Cyclopean system revolves around a giant black hole, Sagittarius A, located in the center of the Milky Way. Some fly for flying like for 100 years, some for 1000. The orbit of some objects are very elongated. This is very interesting, we just don't know enough and I really hope that the scientists continue uh, their work. Well, in a paper published in the journal Nature, uh, scientists suggested that there were stars inside the ghosts that were surrounded by a gas shell. It is deformed by the gravity of the black hole. The internal stars themselves, according to the American scientist and her colleagues, were formed as a result of the mer merger of double stars. They collided again under the influence of a black hole. Now these ghostly balls are circling the, in the center of our galaxy. Astronomers are waiting for the confirmation of their theory. It is supposed to be gas and dust from the shell of G objects. Someday, perhaps soon, they'll be swallowed by a black hole. The substance will heat up and blaze with abundant radiation before disappearing into the abyss. And scientists promise that such grandiose fireworks will be in the whole galaxy, probably visible by from our planet too. Now to the other mysteries of the universe, about this, those strange repetitive, repetitive signals from the deep space. Apparently somebody is getting in touch every 16 days. Several dozen astronomers collaborating on the, uh, in the Canadian hydrogen intensity mapping experiment collaboration engaged in the study of so-called fast radio bursts, FRB mysterious signals of incredible power coming from other galaxies and they produced a <coughs> excuse me, scientific article in which they announced that they found those repetitive signals. The source of the rapid radio bursts which was which we now know as FRB um, but that particular source was uh, designated as FRB 1 Eight zero nine one six dot J zero one five eight plus sixty five. It was turned on, so to say, every sixteen point thirty five days, and it basically worked for four days, sending one of two pulses per hour. Then interrupted the broadcasting for twelve days and started signaling again with the same frequency. A similar pattern was discovered by scientists over 409 days of observations between September 2018 and October 2019. Before they and their many colleagues around the world extremely concerned about the phenomenon, they caught only one solitary FRB from different sources. With few exceptions, astronomers have recorded repeated flares but never before have signals been in orderly series or uniform series. The phenomenon is really mysterious. Astronomers and astrophysicists have been scratching their heads about this very FRBs for more than 10 years. The duration of each signal is exactly 5 milliseconds. The range is very narrow. Power, uh, the power is colossal equivalent to the energy our sun has radiated for tens of thousands of years. 
It was astronomer Duncan Larimer of West Virginia University in Morgantown that first came across FRB in 2007. Um, I think he also found mention among our archival records. Well, anyway, it took five years to realize that FRB is not a glitch of hardware, not any hindrance, but something real. In 2012, astronomers discovered four more such signals, then another and another. Now they were caught by dozens, which still doesn't produce the answer we seek for. Science has not yet identified astronomical objects, objects that could generate FRB. We just do not know such objects. Surprisingly, the only reasonable assumption to date is that FRBs are of artificial origin, that they are products of technological activity of a highly developed extraterrestrial civilization. And the term signals from aliens <coughs> coined in, as a joke, in jest, may end up being correct. After all, even serious astrophysicists do not exclude this. The discovery of repetitive signals from a signal single source only reinforces a seemingly fantastic version alien civilizations. Do FRBs have any information, maybe some code? It is unknown, but reporting the detection of order of uni or uniformity in the in the in the work of FRB uh, 180916.j01586565 uh, the researchers hinted that the radiation of the source is likely modulated what is the pecu peculiarity of modulation was not explained uh, Michal Hipke of the German Institute for Data Analysis in New Kirchen in Germany and John learned of the University of Hawaii in Manoa were the reason to suspect aliens in the FRB uh, mailing list five years ago. I think that, that they mentioned it. They found that rapid flashes include high and low frequency radio waves. All the signals caught by the by that time were subject to a single pattern. The time of lag of low frequencies relative to high multiples of 187.5. What this means is also still unclear until now. We, we still do not know. But it looks no less intriguing than modulation. Astronomers have once again discovered those strange signals from the depths of space. <coughs> Excuse me. In 2017, um, astronomers <coughs> caught this mysterious signal from a deep space. Within a few milliseconds, it flashed brightly in the radio frequency spectrum and disappeared, seemingly forever. However, subsequent observations have shown that the signal is repeated, <coughs> though almost 600 times weaker. And this led scientists to believe that the strange radio flashes that, uh, flashes that we have to continue that we continue to catch from the depths of space are actually much more active and complex than it seems. Okay, again, this phenomenon has been dubbed by astronomers as rapid radio bursts. And again, it's just in just a couple of milliseconds, electromagnetic energy is released somewhere in space with the, the power com comparable to hundreds of millions of suns. Scientists have no idea, not only what, provo what provokes those bursts, but even about where most of them come from. Of the 150 fast radio bursts known to science, only a few have been tracked to at least the galaxy from which they originate. Not all of the radio bursts are the same. They vary in signal strength, polarization, and even duration. However, the most important difference remains the fact that the signal is repeated. Most were recorded only once, but some radio bursts began to repeat. 
astronomer uh, Pramir Kumar of the Swinburne University of Technology in Australia suggested that the modern hardware his team worked on the ASKAP system was simply not powerful enough to detect most of the signals and and the some observatories they also found nothing but the data uh, of uh, Green Bank Telescope after calibration still still had two more weak signals according to Kumar to Kumar, the main problem is that these signals are very difficult to catch and therefore it is not always possible to understand whether they will be repeated. In any case, the researchers intend to use the most sensitive equipment and try to understand what actually serves as a source of the mysterious radio bursts. So this is what I wanted to tell you about our, our universe and its may, many mysteries and complexities and how they impact our Earth or do not. We just do not know enough, but we need to keep our eyes on the sky and continue research. It's fascinating that every year scientists find more and more, and I'll bring you more. To me, it was interesting that the major Russian newspaper, for example, was paying attention to some of the subjects that I am interested to as well, and more in science. But I'm sure in China it's the same, United States and other areas. I believe that joint research will produce more, and I think it's happening. And despite obstacles, we will go forward. This pandemic will disappear, but there is so much more to research. Again, thank you for your attention, and I'll present more videos on the subjects that interest me. Stay well, all of you.